Hey guys, welcome back. It's Maverick here with another episode of Demon Slayer. And indeed, I do believe that today we are going to be seeing the defeat of the Demon Siblings, or, you know, such much has been spoiled to us by the preview of the uh, of this episode at the end of the last episode. It's literally in the episode title, right? Uh, and certainly where we left off last episode, eh, the Demon Siblings were in a bit of a pickle, right? Giltaro, uh, the brother, is about to get himself beheaded um, by Tandro, no less. But, um, you know, it's hard to say, right? Even if, even if Tandro does manage to behead Giltaro, I don't think that would really change much, considering that they already mentioned that one of the victory conditions was that Giltaro and Daiki had to have their heads, you know, chopped off at the same time, right? So even if this attack proves to be successful, I kind of feel that that's only just, um, you know, it's not really going to do much. There's probably going to have to spend this entire episode still figuring out a way to attack both of them simultaneously. Of course, everybody working together and so on and so forth. And then after that, I guess we can get into the um, the, the aftermath of everything. Potentially even uh, into the backstory of the Demon Siblings, right? Which, um, you know, we, we've already seen hints throughout. But maybe they will expand a little bit more on that part. So with that being said, though, let's get right into the episode. Alright, let's begin in 3, 2, 1, play. Mm-hmm. Go! Oh. <laughs> Once again, like, why do people really, f why do people feel that Demon Slayer is like a, a general audience kind of anime or manga? Oh, interesting. So they are actually attacking him at the same time. Last episode, we only saw Tanjiro about to behead him. But now, you know, on, in this shot, we see both of their swords extending, right? So I wonder if this is actually going to be a case where... Giltaro manages to, you know, finagle his way out of the situation by, I don't know, like, deflecting their blades towards each other, Tengen's and Tanjiro's, and using that as an opening to, uh, to escape. I mean, that certainly wouldn't have been the first time uh, such a technique has been shown, right? Utilizing your enemy's attacks against each other. I think even our protagonist group has utilized that a few times before. You know, the interesting thing about this song, right, this opening is... If it wasn't for the arrangement, right, the backing track and what, you know, the instrumentals and, and the drums and whatnot, I do have a feeling that it would instead be, be instead, like, more of a power ballad. As it is, as it is right now, it's more of a hype song, right? Defeating an upper rank demon. Right, well, it's literally in the title, right? No, I like how Tingen looks here a lot more. <laughs> I guess he even looks more like a ninja than he does now. I wonder who's the cooker out of this three. <laughs> mm. 
So, I don't get it. Last time he said that he had one surviving brother, right? Who... So, is that brother also dead, or...? <laughs> well, you know, within a harem, you always gotta have a hierarchy, right? <laughs> Instant regeneration. Okay. Something even more direct, I guess. Us. Hello, behind. Is this actually gonna get into tragedy? I mean, this wouldn't be the first time that a pretty important character gets killed, right? But still, though. Interesting. So that's how they they work in the title of this episode, eh? Sneaky sneaky. 
So maybe it's not going to be done in this episode. Oof. That's a death flag if I'd ever seen one. But at the same time, though, would that be kind of like a reverse death flag, though? Some reason? Hmm. There was both water and f and flame at the same time. What? Yeah, he blended them. So if that's the case, then isn't it kind of ironic that at this day and age, like, they're all concentrated on just one style now? Come on, Tengen, where are you, man? There we go. Meanwhile, oh, wow, they did manage to do it at the same time, really? I guess in this case, the... Hmm? Okay, so... I see. So just don't give him time to recover, right?
Mm. Hey, this guy is fast. Is this a good thing for them or a bad thing for them? If they're all at the same place. Damn, that it's uh, you really manned up. Nice. Quit. I was about to say, quit chatting in the middle of a battle, dude. <laughs> Pure instinct, eh? <laughs> he definitely has the wild style. I love that dodging in right there. Those details in the footwork, though. <laughs> How many times? Oh, don't know how many times. <laughs> Just waiting for him to say how many times. <laughs> Hell yeah, go Inosuke!
It can! <laughs> Literally a saw. <laughs> wow, and he's actually sawing her hands off at the same time as well. Woo! Yeah, there it is. N again, nice detail. The hands are sawed off. I do kind of find it funny, though, that <laughs> literally making a song motion is a form. Beef. <laughs> We're playing American football now, guys. Aw. Okay, I guess not. I was actually hoping they were gonna, like, play past the head around. Oh, that could still be possible? Maybe? Yeah, <laughs> rather than the poison, it's that was literally almost on the heart, god So where's the backup now? <laughs> Damn. That's got to be like the biggest like almost game over at this point, eh? All right. Actually, let me let me just skip the ending part and get to the end in part. Uh and I'll see you guys after this. All right, let's start with Ninin -nin in three, two, one, play. Don't give up till the end. <laughs> See you guys after this. Hot damn, that was another hype episode. And I love what they did with the ending there as well with the Nin Nin, right? Uh, typically, the Nin Nins are supposed to be more lighthearted. They add some humor and comedy into uh, what is normally a, a more tense situation, a life and de death situation. But, you know, this episode, the ending there was really... You know, we, we got into way too serious of the situation, right? So not really the times to be not really the time to be all, you know, flowers and sunshine at this point. So I love that they made that adaption into leading on to the next to the title of the next episode, Never Give Up and Whatnot. Um and speaking of the title, 
Holy crap, I love how they did this bait here, right? You know, at the end of last episode, I was like, huh, that's certainly very blatant here, titling the episode exactly as, you know, defeating an upper rank demon, right? So I was like, hey, they're not really being subtle about this, right? Um, is it a case where it's going to, you know, even if it didn't happen in this episode, maybe it's it's uh, sort of signifying that they, fu they figured out some pattern or some method or some way, like some sort of strategy in order to achieve the end, right? The, the sounding of the counters, the counter attack uh, and, and whatnot. But, you know, the fact that it was entirely a bait and it was instead actually a... Um, it was instead just uh, part of a flashback uh, of, of Hinatsuru and, um, you know, Tengen and the others. And, you know, it was literally just, uh, it, it was instead more of a condition, right? If we can accomplish this, then we can do something, right? And in fact, it, it serves much more like a death flag than, than anything else. Although... Now that I think about it, right, and and once I went back and 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 um and watched, uh, listened to what uh, you know Hinatsuru was actually saying, right, she wasn't saying, hey, once we defeat all upper, once we defeat an upper demon, let's uh let's all retire and and live the rest of our lives happily. She actually had her own condition where maybe not all four of us would survive, right? So actually, in my eyes, that serves more as an anti flag, a, a reverse death flag instead of a death flag. Like if it was a simple case of saying after we defeat every one let's all you know let's all retire and live happily ever after that would definitely serve as a death flag here so i don't know i think there's still a chance that there's still a pretty good chance that um you know the outcome of all this is going to be much more positive than than expected like i don't really think any of the um any of the three uh three wives of tengen is going to die tengen himself i don't really think it's going to die but now, I could be wrong, right? Certainly, the the this work is not shy with killing, uh, I guess, semi important characters, right? Obviously, not not part of the protagonist group, but but um, you know, anyone else, I would say, is fair game. And so that's why, even in you know, in Inosuke's case, even though that seemed to be quite the fatal wound there, I'm not really too too worried about him, if that makes sense. Um, you know, for one where, even though it looked like his heart got pierced or, or something of that sort, like, I don't know, maybe because of the unique sort of style that Inosuke practices, so it's, you know, he's going to come out of it okay at the very end, not really sure, but, but, um, there are some things that are more permanent, right, such as Tengen losing his arm, I do believe that is permanent, but hey, that kind of fits in with everything, right, he, it seems that they, they expect to retire after they do accomplish the job of defeating an upper rank demon, so, um, well, you know, maybe he can get some disabled, <laughs> disabled disability pay, right? I joke, I joke, but, but still, um, yeah, I mean, I guess in the end it's still gonna turn out okay, but, but certainly this is certain, turning into a very dark situation, right? You know, even in the past episodes, you can kind of see, all right, in this situation, we still got some backup, right? We still got Nezuka, we still got Tengen, we still got some other people who haven't uh, came out yet, so maybe we can receive uh, some reinforcements that way. But at this point in time, you know, in the next episode, who's going to come and help them, right? Is it is it going to be a case where, you know, they still have to fend for themselves and, and you know, drop whatever remaining strength that they do have? Or, or is there actually going to be some sort of outside help, which uh, we haven't really seen up to this point, but still... It, it, it really seems hard to to imagine like what else they can do right um i mean uh, sure so we we still haven't seen uh makio and um makio and uh and suma back right and because they're out helping the they're out helping the civilians and whatnot but even if they do come back like is that really going to change the tide uh, i mean certainly they're both ninjas as well as well they're both shinobi but um still you, even with that in mind um I don't know, man. I don't know. Is is that really gonna help much? I mean, clearly, clearly, all of the four of them combined together are outclassed. And I'm talking about the demon slayers here, right? Um, it's especially it seems that, uh, for instance, for um, for Kyutaro, he almost seems to be able to take on all four of them by himself. Like, holy crap, this dude is strong. Uh, and but I am glad for that as well, right? They should be strong, right? They're literally an upper rank demon. They're literally a demon that um or demons that have killed many many Hashiras before. It would make it would definitely make more sense if they were stronger and and not um and not vice versa, right? Um. So I, I do wonder if any if there was any time 
in the uh, in the past where maybe two Hashira teamed up in in order to to try and take down this demon, right? You would think that by the third or fourth time that a Hashira was killed by the same exact demon, they would you know think of maybe sending some more people uh, his way and uh, trying to do something about it. But um, you know, I, I digress. Maybe we'll learn more about the workings of the demon slayers um, in in the future. But nah, I guess that's not exactly the focal point here. Uh, it was. I have to say again, this this was a really well choreographed uh, choreographed battle, and um, you know this is what I was expecting from the very beginning. Right, I love that and being able to see them fly all the way back and forth, and utilizing their different styles and and bouncing off of each other. Uh, again, you know there there are many details that I love from from this episode as well. You know, there's all the flashy stuff and and whatnot, right? And certainly, whenever they use any of their breathing styles, you know, all the fireworks and and lighting and whatnot, that's that's impressive. But uh, to me, I, I I'm actually a lot more impressed by things such as um you know the subtle movements that they have, like especially the footwork. I, I love the footwork that they display in in the uh in the battle scenes. Like you know, uh, there was one particular scene where I think it was Zenitsu and um. And Tandro dodging on the roof, uh, you know, dodging all the belts and whatnot, and and you could literally see them, you know, gradually kicking their legs and then, you know, getting into a more squatting position to stand themselves up. I loved little details like that. That, that was really awesome. Uh, and you know, beyond that, of course, all the actual flashing and whatnot. And certainly, that's that's great as well. But we've come accustomed to that, right? Um, and no, I'm not gonna lie that that fight that attack there, you know, where all three of them were up against Daki and and finally managed to allow Inosuke to chop her head off, or I guess saw her head off, right? Oh, well, that was definitely hype, right? Especially adding with the music background music there, you know, it's literally something like a battle music, if you will, um, or or. You know the trumpets and everything. You know it's just like oh, it's it's the rise. It's it's you know you're full of hope or whatnot. You know, it was it was epic there. Uh, I loved it, absolutely loved it. And um, I I do kind of wish though that we saw a little bit more about uh in regards to the blending of styles that Tanjiro um Tanjiro showed off for the first time. I would say here you know blending both water and uh and some reading styles. Um, that does seem to be a thing that's going to go forward. Uh, I, I didn't really quite expand on it at that time, but as I said, I, I do find it kind of ironic, right, that what Tanjiro got from this was that, hey, um, we should actually, the reason that there were so many styles, like maybe they all came out of the, the, you know, sort Kagura, right? So the, the sun breathing style, because, um, you know, each each uh, swordsman that that uh, learned this style gradually, gradually adapted it to, to their own sort of, um, you know their own sort of tendencies and styles and and so that is why we have so many styles at this point uh we have water breathing we have sound we have you know literally everything right um but i i did find it really ironic that that at this point in time instead there are so many swordsmen who who uh you know stick to one particular style and still continue to to practice it right whereas uh what what tanjiro is preaching here is that hey no everybody should should be uh learning every everything else and then trying to to find a blend of what works for them right so it could be possible that uh the future for tandra like what it holds is actually he's going to make his his completely his own new original style yeah, that could work right um what, what do you get when you combine like water with 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 sun or fire like i don't know steam <laughs> steam style <laughs> well hey it could I, I don't know. I'm I'm just talking. I'm just like completely uh, throwing ideas at the wall here. But hey, it could happen, right? Heck, we we literally have a sound breathing style, right? Like what the sound? And and I gotta say though, especially for for Tengen, I still don't understand like what exactly his style entails. It, it's just that you know it's loud, I guess you could say, and and so maybe that would help to disorient it disorient the uh the enemy as well you know like sort of like a flashbang going off each time that he attacks right if if so if that is what what his style is supposed to represent i do wish they could have expanded on it a little bit more right because even at this point in time i'm still not quite sure like what exactly the sound breathing style is supposed to accomplish here uh certainly we, we hear like firecrackers and and you know lights and sound go off every time but it's never really implied like like why is this style strong or or how does it differ from you know everything else right so i do kind of wish that we we got um a little bit more um a little bit more in regards to that 
Um, also, what else to talk about from this episode? I mean, I guess there were, uh, again, so after, after Inosuke did the entire sawing thing, you know, come to think of it, I don't really think this is the first time he pulled off this attack, right? The Palisade attack, I kind of feel that we saw it before, I'm not quite sure when, but <laughs> I did find it very funny that he's just blatantly sawing her hand and her head off. And by the way, I love that, again, this is sort of like attention to detail, right? So in the... Um, even though they didn't really show us the scene of, of Inosuke literally sawing her heads uh, or or head off, her hands or head off, uh, that might have been a little bit too graphic. But but regardless, uh, you know, in the scene where her head does fly off, we also see the the the, the hands fly off as well, right? Literally uh, sawed away. So uh, again, attention to detail. I love that part. You know, the only thing that would probably make that particular scene more awesome, you know, was before um, maybe before. Um, uh, before Kyotaro, you know, literally stabbed Inosuke in the chest, uh, I wish they could have done like some something more more meme right, or or more more humorous. Like again, maybe passing her head back and forth, like making making it into almost a game of sorts, uh, sort of like you know American American football, you know, passing you know or, or rugby or something of that sort of like packing it tossing it back and forth and whatnot before and and everybody's like laughing and it's all fun and games and then suddenly somebody <laughs> you know somebody gets gets a knife sticking out of their chest and and whatnot but um no that that's really more of a nitpick than than anything and i guess uh yeah so so i mean i am i am entirely satisfied with how this episode went and uh we also got to see a little bit more of the tender moments, if you will, between uh, Tengen and uh, Hinatsuru and um, and uh, uh, Makio and and Suma, um, yeah. I mean, there's again, there's clearly a hierarchy there, right? Hinatsuru is probably you know the the the, the head wife, if you will, uh, and um, you know who knows who two and three are, right? And that that kind of depends. I guess number two might be might be uh, Makio and number three Suma, but I guess maybe they wouldn't really perceive it that way, but you know, you guys gotta admit, right? Hinatsuru is probably the most, um, uh, the most, um, I wouldn't say deserving, but but most like a headwife character in in this. So, and, and it of course helps that she's, uh, I think, stylized more in the traditional beauty sense as well. She even has like a beauty mark uh, near her eyes there, the traditional sort of like beauty beauty mark where you know you you have that. Uh, what's it called in English? I. It's not a freckle. It, it's like a. I don't know. It's it's just called a beauty mark, a beauty spot. And I I'm not really sure how how it's described in English, but you know, she, you get the sense that she's more in the traditional beauty kind of sense, right? Like calm, serene, collected, that kind of thing. Uh, but yeah. Anyways, so uh, we got some we got some nice tinder moments. We got some plot progression. We got some awesome fights. And at the very end there. We are falling towards despair, right? Uh, I can't wait to see how exactly they get through all of this. Are they going to bring up some some hidden inner strength or is someone going to help? Well, I guess we shall just see next episode. So until next time, guys. Thank you, guys. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.